All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content uh, and basketball content. We're going to be doing that. But first of all, I got to give a shout out to each and every one of my gym stars. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BKA the People's Champ. Coming to you live with another video. Ooh, look at the separation there, boy. Look at them things. Them things. Ooh, the individuals. I say the individuals is coming in here. We about to be fresh from the dread shop, man. We got a place down here, around here that they do the stuff, man. I'm about to do it. But I think I'm just going to let it get longer and let it do the little coils or what have you and let it lay down in the little coils first. And then I'm going to get it locked because I don't want to go through the ugly stage. I'm trying to circumvent the ugly stage, man. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Shut up! Ain't nobody ask you nothing. Anyway, so uh, like I was saying, man, it's it's a bit of a throwback Thursday, man. We get, we're going to have NBA news. We're going to have some um, a lot of NBA news today, but also a lot of 2K news. But the first thing I need y'all to do after you like the video is let me know down in the comments who you rocking with today. It's a bit of a throwback Thursday, so we got Jasmine Cashmere or Isla Fox. I mean, I say Jasmine Cashmere or Isla Fox. These are two vintage, vintage harlots from back in the day, man. And, you know, I, I just figured, you know, I'd throw them up there on our Throwback Thursday, man. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. If you are, you are. If you aren't, you aren't. It is what it is. But, hey, that just lets y'all know this is not a kid's show. Yes. Copa, leave me alone. Anyway, so check it out, man. First things first, we got... Um, my boy Trey Young and Atlanta Legend already, my guy. Trey Young, the, the, the story actually reads Trey Young helps cancel over a million dollars in medical debt for people in Atlanta with a donation. So, we're going to go through this real quick. I'm going to give y'all my thoughts on it. We're going to keep on rolling, man. The Hawks Point Guard Trey Young is giving back to the community and working to help those with medical debt. The Hawks star partnered with RIP Medical Debt to get rid of more than $1 million in debt for people in Atlanta who are struggling to pay their past due medical bills. Now, this is one of those things, and then we're going to go on down here, and it just says Young, Young was born in Texas. Uh, he went to school, high school, and college in Oklahoma. We all, we all saw the exploits in Oklahoma. We saw him throwing it up from half court. But this is the thing that's the most important. RIP met, oh, let me see. Uh, the city has welcomed me with open arms. Giving back, giving back to this community is extremely important to me. Of course, we love you, man. And we the ones taking up for you when they talking that dumbness about Luca being better than you, which is apples to oranges is what I say. They're two different types of players, but hey, it is, it is, it is what it is. But uh, anyway, uh, let me say it's extremely important to me. I hope these families can find a bit of relief knowing that the bills have been taken care of and were um, and as we enter the new year. Okay, so it just says RIP medical debt, rip medical debt, whatever it is, uh, helps those helps those who need financial assistance with paying health related bills. They put an emphasis on those below the level of um, uh, below the poverty level or with debts that are significantly larger than their incomes. So if you don't make a lot of money and you got a lot of debt, then you know they you know they, they try to help you out, man. It's not just for everybody. It's not one of those things where it's just like an all-inclusive type program or you know something like that. It's just one of those things where if you really need it, then they are there for you. And if you don't really need it, then yeah, you pay your own dang on bills. Anyway, a company finding it, whatever, whatever, whatever. So this is this is the biggest thing right here, and that this is what I want y'all to understand. Trey Young, Young's donation of ten thousand dollars given to the given through the Trey Young Foundation was able to get rid of uh, over a million dollars in debt. So that's what one million fifty nine thousand one hundred and eighty six dollars and uh, thirty nine cents worth of medical debt for five hundred and seventy people in the Atlanta area. You can't do nothing but applaud that young man for that, man. But the thing that's more important here is the same thing that Spencer Dinwiddie said, because this is what I was thinking. It Big time Trey. Boom. We taking nothing away from Trey. Also speaks to our debt-based system where 10,000 in cash cancels a million dollars in debt. Sickening. You absolutely right about that, Spencer. It is sickening because like, we, we already know that we live in a debt-based economy and all that good stuff, and $10,000 can kill a million dollars. 10000 cash can kill a million dollars in debt. Man, it's just like, bro, we shouldn't even... We live in the richest country. Well, one of the richest countries in the world. I don't know if we're the richest country in the world no more. But you know what? This is the freest country in the world, I guess. You know, well, it used to be anyway. But anyway, look. 
rich, a country this rich and this free should have universal health care just like they got in Oregon. Don't tell me you can't afford it. And the first, the first step toward that was trying to regulate health care so it's not out the wazoo with the Affordable Health Care Act. At least that's what they tried to frame it as. But the biggest thing that they did with the Affordable Health Care Act was pre you can't get denied because of pre-existing conditions and then no out-of-pocket maximum, you know, like over the over the years. Like, let's say if you had, like, if you had a heart attack or if you had, like, some chemotherapy or something like that, bro, back in the day, you could you could max out your health insurance. You can't really do that anymore. That's one thing the Affordable Health Care Act did. But it just says, like, it just speaks to that because $10,000 wiped out a million dollars in, in, in debt, but we shouldn't even have a problem anyway because people should not, you, you, you already shouldn't, it, it, we should have universal health care, period. People shouldn't have to be sitting here worried about how they gonna take their bait. Like, look, I'm all for everybody to get a job, everybody work, but I know coming from a family that didn't have a whole lot of money all the time, everybody ain't able, people doing the best that they can. The last thing that people are thinking about is, dang, I might get sick or I might get that. Yes, you got a plan, you got a plan for the bad times because if you don't plan, if you fail to plan, you, fa you, pl you plan to fail, whatever people wanna say, but all that stuff is all well and good to the money coming straight out of your pocket. And you gotta figure out, do I wanna buy, do I wanna do healthcare or do I wanna feed my babies this week? Like that's just is what it is. Some people could, could, could argue that that's, their, that's on them, but look, like I said, I know everybody ain't there, but I know it's a lot of people out there doing the best that they can. And it just is what it is, man. People. Ain't, ain't nobody want to be in that situation. They want to do better, but hey, sometimes you can't. So it's nice that somebody came along and give these guys, you know, a little guardian angel, hop on their shoulder, give them a little help. But we do need universal health care. Canada got it. Uh, Portland, I mean, Oregon got it. Why can't the rest of the U.S. have it? I don't know. It is what it is, man. We ain't going to get too political on this show today, man. We're going to get on to the next thing, man. Let me show y'all something real quick, man. I want to show y'all something. My boy Jimmy Butler was, uh, was, Got into it with uh, T.J. Warren to last me, night, my guy. Let's see what I he think had to it's say. Tough for him because I can guard him and he can't guard me. I think at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Um, but like I said, um, I think you just gotta watch your mouth in certain situations. There's some that you just don't say as a man. And um, I mean, he he got he got to see me. Ooh, he talking that smack, like ain't he? Was, was truly disrespectful, and it's all good because um, we see him again. I'm. I ain't scared of nobody. So, you know, he talking about, oh, we're going to fight this, that, this, that. It is what it is to me. The kiss. Soft. Soft. Oh, man, he he's kissed like, at him. He's like, nah, you lead, soft. Like, nowhere near me. Um, and if, if I was their coach, I would I would never put him on me ever again. Dang. He's, like, no. Never? Put somebody Forever, in. ever? I'm going to tear his every time. Like, so to me, Ooh. I think it's tough for him because Damn. I can guard him and he can't guard me. Like, at the end of the day, that's and that's and that what it come down to, man. We we down to the end of it, man. Jimmy Butler just was talking about what well, he was, who he was talking about was T.J. Warren, and he was saying that T.J. Warren can't guard him, but he can guard T.J. Warren. If you didn't see the play last night, Jimmy Butler went around T.J. Warren, and um and Warren fouled him, but he held on a little bit longer than he should have, and Jimmy Butler took exception to it. He got ready to square up, and then he's like, you know, you know, cooler heads did prevail, but. Uh, Jimmy, I think Jimmy left the game. He had like 16 points, some TJ Warren had three. So that adds some validity to what Jimmy Butler is saying. I don't know, man. I like the NBA rivalries and stuff like that, but I understand what Jimmy's saying too, man. Sometimes you be busting somebody ass on the court so bad and you feel like they put a little extra oomph into that foul and you take exception to it. I ain't got no problem with it, man. But Jimmy Butler did tweet out and he did circle it on his calendar. They paid him again February 20th. So, hey. We gonna see what that's like, man. But do y'all think that Jimmy overreacted or do y'all think that it was justified, man? Cause a lot of times we see the last thing and we think that's what led to it. But a lot but, but a lot of times that's not what actually really probably led to it. So you see the last thing, but we don't see the, all the jibber jabbering, all the talking and stuff like that that they had uh, along the way. So I don't know. I definitely have been in situations like that and I definitely understand what uh, Jimmy was saying. But at the same time, at the same time, Cooler heads got to prevail, man. You got to control yourself. Just keep keep whooping them on the court and uh, do your thing, man. Up next, man, speaking of things on the court, check this out, man. So, boom! Oh, my God! Kimba, are you okay? Kimba gets bodied by a pick. Brad Stevens is pissed. Kimba's pissed. They don't call a foul or anything like that. Wait, run that back. We going to run it back. What are you talking about? He goes, talks to the ref. The ref... Uh, throws him out of the game, and as he gets thrown out of the game, ew, boom, this is what you see right here. 
a fan is ejected, boom, and arrested for throwing a beer onto the court. If you look, you can actually see who threw it. I think you can see who threw it. Nope, you can't see who threw it. Uh, yeah, it came from up. But guess what? They got tape. They got video everywhere. Ain't nobody going to jail for nobody. Everybody snitching. But look, I ain't gonna lie. Do y'all think Kimmel just got mad? Boom! Because he got bodied by that pick. He definitely got bodied. He definitely got bodied by that pick. And, uh, you know, anyway, fan throws the beer on the court. He hits somebody there. And, uh, like, bro, you just can't have stuff like this, man. We don't want another Malice at the Palace, man. We don't want another one of them things. Like, I understand fans be thinking blah, 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 this and that. You want to get close to the game. Bro, you're not in the game. Come watch the game, and that's it. That's all you need to be doing is watching the game. Because if they come up there in the stands and, 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 and body you with a pick, you ain't going to like it too much. And it's just crazy because people love to love to be, hey, I'm a fan, I'm this and that. You know, this big, strong, that. Bro, these people, people too, man. And you can't tell somebody how to react. Do I do I condone it? No, but I understand. It's just like when uh when uh Vernon Maxwell, Vernon Mack went up in the stands and, and, and he hopped on that fast. The fan said somebody's daughter, uh, Vernon Mack daughter had, you know, some special needs or what have you. And he went up there and got with him. And it's like, do would I do it? No, but I understand if you do. It just is what it is, man. I like I don't condone it, but you just don't never know what type of state of mind somebody is in or what type of phone call or how what type no, you, you just can't do stuff like that. Come to the game and watch plays like this where you got this pass by Herder. Check it out. He's going to the rim. Get that shot out of here. John Collins kicks it up to Pert Herder. Herder travels, gives it back to John Collins. Right! That's what you come to the game to see. We didn't, ain't nobody come to see the fans. We came to see stuff like this. Right! Throw that thing down, boy. Throw it down, young man. Throw it down. Look, one more time for that pass, which was an obvious travel because he dropped the heat. Look at that, look at that. I, I got to talk about this right quick. He walked the entire span of the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six steps. Boy, he took more steps than James Harden on a step back. But they don't call it on him, so you know it is what it is. Last but not least, man, we want to talk about one thing today. So we were talking about yesterday. A lot of people wanted to put down that who was the real Kobe stopper. Uh, Ruben Patterson was the Kobe stopper. If you remember in that playoff series, Ruben Patterson was on Kobe. And Sean Kemp came and he had he had them put, uh, Ruben Patterson was soaking his feet. And he was like, Kobe stopper, Kobe stopper. And he was like shaking the pan back and forth, you know, that Ruben Patterson was soaking his, soaking his feet in. But in that series, nobody really stopped Kobe. Now, they did a good job on Kobe as far as uh, Bonzi Wells was busting Kobe ass on the offensive side. Ruben Patterson was doing a decent job on defense, but the Lakers ultimately won that. But Kobe himself says the only person that really was the Kobe stopper is this guy right here, Tony Allen. He said, the player I always had the most trouble with individually was Tony Allen. So we were all wrong. Kobe from the mamba, from the mouth of the mamba himself. The real Kobe stopper was Tony Allen. Where we at, man? We 13 minutes in. We ain't even gotten no 2K news, man. Let's go over scores real quick, man. We trying this new format. If we don't get no views, we won't do it again. Check it out. The Spurs over the Celtics last night, even though, you know, all this stuff happened. Kimball got kicked out of the game. Uh, but, hey, DeMar DeRozan, 30.6 rebounds, 4 assists. Uh, Gordon Hayward, 18 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists in a losing effort as the, as the uh, Spurs beat the Celtics. Raptors versus the Hornets. Uh... You know, we got uh, Terrence Davis, 23 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists. Terry, scary Terry, with 27 points, no rebounds, and three assists in a losing effort as the uh, as the Raptors uh, go over the top of the Hornets. The Magic, best the Wizards. Uh, I mean, hey, Vucevic has 29 points. What's that, 29 points, nine rebounds, and two assists. And Brown has 18 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists in a losing effort as the Magic beat the brakes, the utter brakes off the Wizards, man. Anyway, uh, the game of the night that we were just talking about, the Heat best, the Pacers, uh, Tyler Hero, 19.7 rebounds, two assists, and uh, Baby Sabonis, ain't it Donata Sabonis, I think it's how you say his name, 27 points, 14 rebounds, six assists in a losing effort as the Heat beat the the Pacers, the Nugent, the Rich Creamy Nougats eke one out over Luka Donis and the Mavericks as Luka has another near triple-double, 27 points, 9 rebounds, and 10 assists, uh, 33 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 for the Joker as they uh, win on the last second, just tip in by the Joker, man. The Hawks fall to the, uh, I guess both of the guys fall last night. Hawks fall to the uh, Rockets last night, uh, 115 to, to 122. 
James Harden, 41 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, a nice little triple-double. And Trey uh, Young has a triple-double of his own in a losing effort. But, hey, at least he's doing triple-doubles and stuff. He just don't, We just ain't got the team, man. 42 points, 13 rebounds, and 10 assists. A hell of a triple-double for a young man. And a 10K, and a 10K assist to the medical families of Atlanta. You damn right. Hey, the Bulls. Lose to the Pelicans. Zach Levine, 32 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, uh, 123 to 108. And uh, Brandon Ingram, that, that little boy showing out. Well, he got free, and now he is hooping. 29 points, 8 rebounds, 11 assists in a winning effort over the um, over the Chicago Bulls. The Knicks, 104 to 128. Uh, lose to the Jazz, 104 to uh, 128. Frank Nicolina, I'm sorry, Steph Curry. Frank Nicolina, I mean, uh, Neil Aquila. Frank Neal Nealikina, 16 points, four rebounds, three assists, and Bojan Bogdanovic, 20 points, three rebounds, three assists in the win and get the win over the New York. And last but not least, the Bucks over the Warriors. Under the Kumpo, 30 points, 13 rebounds, and four assists. And uh, Alec Burks, 14, I mean, 19.6 rebounds, 7 assists. So now we got all over, all that's over with, man. We got all the NBA stuff. Let's go to 2K. We got my boy, I'm Davis, man. He's asking the question, which was the best Rivet City? He's going, he really went through and just said all the parts. Rivet City from 2K15. Uh, Rivet City from 2K16. When we, when, we, when we won the championship, we was on the rooftop. And then River City in the factory, 2K17, man. Hey, which one of y'all think was the best? Also, we got the Flyers in 16, the Flyers in 15, and Old Town in 17. You can't even play Old Town in 17, bro. We got kicked out so much, it wasn't even a big deal. And then, last but not least, this uh, Sunset from 16, Sunset from 17. We stayed in Sunset on 17. And then Sunset from 15. Which one do y'all think was the best course, man? Y'all let me know down in the comments which one do you think. I think the 17 courts were probably the best, except for with the exception of uh maybe maybe um Sunset. Because Old Town, I, I really didn't care about 16's rooftop for for us, the um for River City was cool. But you know, y'all let me know down in the comments. Next up. Players added to the all-time teams. Well, we got Chris Bosch, the Bostrich, added to the all-time Heat and all-time Raptors team. Well, we got Jason Terry, Jason, uh, JT, the Jet, added to the all-time Mavericks. We got Jameer Nelson added to the all-time Magic. And the band, the Kobe Stopper, baby, come on, man. We, you know we work this stuff in. Somebody said James Posey was the Kobe Stopper, and yeah, he did a good job on it too. But Tony Allen, the Kobe Stopper, is, is um, you know, on the all-time Celtics team. And that's really all we got for y'all today, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope everything didn't go over y'all's head, and I hope y'all really come back and subscribe for more daily 2K and NBA content. Let me know if I should leave in the NBA segment or should I put it last? Or should I just kick it out? Um, also, we didn't get any update on the patch yet. Uh, I would surmise that they really don't. They, it's probably going to be either tomorrow or it'll be Tuesday at the latest before it gets out. Just because of how these things go. Normally, it's patch Tuesday. Tuesday is the day that patches normally come out. Uh, but we know 2K will drop a patch on the weekend. Especially if it's a VC glitch, they'll drop the patch next hour. So, you know it is what it is. Anyway, let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. And who y'all going with for the day? Jasmine Casmir. Or Isla Fox. Damn it, I say Jasmine Casimir. Or Isla Fox. Y'all let me know down in the comments, man. And if y'all familiar with their work, we know that Jasmine, we know that Isla Fox is nasty. But Jasmine Casimir is filthy. All right? Just is what it is. I'm out of here, man. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. I feel the eyes burning in the back of my head, so I'm going to get on up out of here. And I'm out of y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. God speak!